Hey guys, this is Simon. Now, if you're into coffee, if you drink a lot of coffee, then you probably heard about a company called Lucky. It's a Chinese coffee chain company. Uh, I think it was founded in 2017. Personally, I don't drink a lot of coffee, so I haven't tried their product yet. But I heard that their product is pretty popular in China because of its decent coffee and its affordability. So within the last three years, it has opened more than 4,500 stores worldwide. That's pretty impressive, right? However, just several days ago, their executive team have admitted that they have fabricated their like sales revenue uh, for 2019 by about like 300 million US dollars. So people estimate their real revenue for 2019 is around like 400 million US dollars. So they almost like double their number like just by lying. So consequently, their stock value has dropped significantly. I think today the total value of their stock is like about one sixth of its original price. So which is pretty, I mean, self-explanatory, right? I won't even be surprised if in the future the company go completely bankrupt because seriously, they don't give a shit about their credibility and I don't know who is going to trust them in the future, right? I think it doesn't matter which part of the world you are from. I would say like we can all agree that this kind of fraudulent behavior should not be tolerated, right? I mean, and especially for a public listed company, a lie can cost millions of dollars for investors and thousands of people may end up losing their jobs, right? But guess what, uh, if you go to Weibo, the Chinese version of Twitter, you can actually find a lot of people uh, supporting the company. Of course, not like all of them, but still a lot. I'm not going to like translate every single comment for you guys, but there are two main reasons why they don't want the company to go out of business. Uh, for the first group of people, they don't care about like whether the company has lied or not. They just don't want to pay a premium price for their coffee. And the coffee from Luckin is indeed fairly cheap compared to other coffee shops such as like Starbucks, right? So they want their cheap option to stay available even the company lied. Like they said in their comment, they don't even care. For the second group of people, because the company is on the US stock market, they think the company is scamming Americans' company in order to supply affordable coffee to its Chinese customers. So they think the fraudulent behavior is justified because it is taking advantage of the Americans and bring benefits to its Chinese customers. They actually call the company the glory of the nation. The main reason why I brought up this whole thing is not that I want to criticize them. Actually, we should criticize them, but I want to talk about like these two group of people's actually lead to two trends in China. That is materialism and nationalism. And that is also today's topic. Now let's talk about materialism first. I know materialism exists everywhere in the world. However, I feel like the degree of materialism we have right now is probably way higher than in most countries. In our society, I feel like uh, money has become the sole measure of success. The level of success is directly correlated with how much money you have, how many apartments you own, and what kind of car you drive. And back at home, uh, parents also like comparing their kids based on what kind of college they have graduated and how much money they make. If someone's son has graduated from Harvard and making like seven figures a year from like Goldman Sachs and you graduated from like some like unknown third tier college and making a minimum wage from a small company, then automatically their son will be considered as a better kid than you. There's nothing wrong with uh, materialism itself. Personally, I think a little bit of materialism can actually effectively boost the economy. People will work hard, they will try to make more money, they will try to change their living condition, and the government can collect more tax and the public infrastructure can be built. However, when you got too much materialism, when the whole society judge a certain behavior is appropriate or not solely based on its economic return, it will create problems. Uh, for instance, just like the first group of people who support the Luckin, they don't give a shit about like, whether Luckin has lied or not. They don't care who is losing like uh, millions of dollars. They only care whether Luckin can keep offering them those like cheap coffee right as long as they can drink their cheap coffee 
the action will be justified. Some of you guys probably also have experienced this before. Like when you talk about some issues happening in China, a lot of people will be like, but China is the number two economy in the world. China has this, China has that. So instead of talking about like whether a certain policy or a behavior is moral or not, they will usually try to justify those kind of behavior by talking about the economic growth. That is also a kind of materialism, right? However, we need to understand that when we only focus on economic return but forget about like morality, eventually everybody will have to pay for that price. Just give you a quick example. You know, parallel trading in China is super popular. So a lot of Chinese, they will go overseas and buy a lot of products and then bring them back to China. So one of the most popular products for them to buy is the baby formula. So if you are a Chinese and you make decent living when you have a child, then most likely you will buy imported baby formula instead of domestic one for your kids. Uh, you may be like, what's the big deal? Like baby formula are not hard to make. It's not rocket science. It has existed for like hundreds of years. Why do you guys spend all much time and travel to buy imported baby formula and send back to China, right? It's not a like uh, technology issue. It's more like a trust issue. So the Chinese parents don't trust the domestic baby formula company and they don't trust the local QA department based on what has happened before. So people from the second largest economy have to buy baby formula from overseas. This kind of trend can tell you something, right? Let's talk about nationalism. Uh, nationalism is just like materialism. It exists everywhere in the world. But I feel like the level of nationalism we have right now is probably also way higher above average. I mean, uh, every single, every Chinese used to be a nationalist. Uh, I used to be a nationalist as well. Let me just tell you my story, although I don't want to share it at all. But anyways, so in 2001, on September 11th, at that time I was in uh, elementary school. And when I woke up, I turned on the TV, I saw the horrible things happening in New York. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I was super excited. Then I went to school and every kid was like that. They were excited, they were chilling, they were running around, they were celebrating, they were like, damn, finally pay back. The United States finally got what they deserve for all their evil doing, you know? But at that time, we never realized that there were thousands of innocent people who have lost their lives. Now, this thing might be a little bit too far away from right now, but let's talk about something new. So several months ago, I think last year, so the Australian swimmer Horton, he refused to stand on a podium with the Chinese swimming superstar like Sun Yang. And, and then Sun Yang was like, OK, you can disrespect me, but you cannot disrespect my country. Then after that, like thousands of like Chinese nationalists swarm into Sun Yang's social media and leave some very unfriendly comments and request him to apologize. Horton never says something disrespectful for the country. He only want to show his disagreement with Sun Yang, right? But Sun Yang is Chinese and Horton is Australian. It's not about like who is right or wrong. It's about which side you are on. Let me just give you one more example. So remember several months ago, uh, there's a Chinese woman in Florida. She bought a bunch of like N95 masks and then sold them to China. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with like uh, helping out your like fellow Chinese, right? If you want to do that, that's fine. But during a live streaming, uh, she was like, I'm going to buy all the N95 masks and I'm not going to leave a single piece for those American which got a huge backlash on the internet. I mean, I'm not going to criticize her again because she probably already had enough. But I just want to mention one thing that is like nationalism sometimes prevents people from thinking independently, especially ultra-nationalism. I mean, I don't know if the woman has actually think about her husband, which is from America, and also her kid is probably an American citizen as well. So what if like, American really running out of mask. I mean, what will actually happen to her family? I don't know if she ever think about the consequences. Now, materialism and nationalism are not only hurting the average Chinese people, but they are also hurting all ethnic Chinese across the globe. For instance, when the Lucky and other Chinese company, they uh, cheated on the world stage, people were started questioning the credibility of all Chinese own a company, right? It doesn't matter whether you are holding a Chinese passport or not. If you speak Chinese and if you look like Chinese, then people will think 
you are Chinese. And also, if we average Chinese keep supporting those companies instead of criticizing them, then people will also question like whether those Chinese actually understand the importance of integrity, right? Then in the future, it's gonna be more difficult for Chinese company to get investment and also it's gonna worry harder for average Chinese student to get jobs overseas. And when the world sees those Chinese buy out all those masks, uh, just like the Chinese woman in Florida did, what will they think of us? They probably will be like, okay, maybe Chinese people are just selfish and they don't show any like sympathy to others. It will be a very negative image for all ethnic Chinese, right? And for the Sun Yang case, uh, it's the same. People will be like, are Chinese people all like that? Uh, do they even understand other people's logic? And do they even know how to communicate with people with different perspectives? Some of my fellow Chinese may be like, hey Simon, we know they are bad, but why are you bringing them up here? Aren't you gonna let more people start noticing those problems and more people will start hating on us? Actually, that's completely the opposite because I think those wrongdoing has already been done. They cannot be undone, right? And when the world witness all those wrongdoing, they will be curious about what people from Chinese community think about. If we keep silent, if we don't talk about those issues openly, then it will only aggravate misunderstanding because the world will think that we don't actually care about those issues and we might also be tolerating those wrongdoing. So we need to take a stance against those wrongdoing and admit those problems and you know try to correct them. I mean, uh, making some mistake is uh, not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. Everybody make mistakes, right? The horrible thing is that you cannot face them. You cannot admit all the wrongdoing you have done. That's horrible. Actually, right now, I would say like we have more and more people actually playing a good part in the world stage. I have some friends, they coordinate with the local factory and they have sent a lot of like medical supply to their American universities. And we have people, rational people on the internet, they went to Horton social media and apologized for our fellow Chinese wrongdoing. And we also have some decent like articles online criticizing Lucky's fraudulent behaviors. Although I do understand that under the current Chinese system, I don't think materialism and nationalism will go away very quickly. But at least we can play our part, at least we can influence people around us, right? And we can warn people that extra materialism and nationalism is not a good thing for us. It's not beneficial for the entire nation in the long run. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe. And yeah, gonna catch you on the next one, okay? Peace.